Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our April 8th council meeting. Roll call, please. Brewster? Here. Walters? Here. Martin? Here. Ewart? Benner? Here. Parton? Yeah, here. Crum? Here. Thompson? Here. Our invocation tonight will be given by Dave Butter, West Hazel Baptist Church. Let's pray together. Father God, this is the time of year when our world is filled with new life, new beauty, and we are grateful. We're thankful for the new leaves and the new flowers, the new plants, the new opportunities that we have to go outside and enjoy the wonder and beauty of your creation. Father, on this day when the sun was eclipsed in some parts of our nation, that your love for us can never be eclipsed. We're thankful that you made it very visible to us through your son, Jesus Christ, and in so many other wonderful ways. And Father, we're thankful that you give us new evidences of your love for our lives every single day we live. So open our eyes that we can see, Father. Father, we're thankful tonight for our mayor and the members of this city council. We're thankful for all the work that they do to help make our community a better place in which to live. And Father God, tonight we pray that you will fill their hearts with your love, fill their minds with your wisdom, so that decisions that they make this evening will be decisions that you want them to make and that will contribute to the well-being of our community. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Our, uh, next, we have a special order of business, a, a proclamation regarding Child Abuse Prevention Month. So we have uh, Rachel, Ashley, and uh, Lori, if you'd like to come on up to the podium, and I'll uh, read the, proc the proclamation. So Ashley is also the mayor of Kichai, so I think you are here on a different role tonight. Just slightly. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> so this is a mayoral <laughs> proclamation on Child Abuse Prevention Month. Whereas children are our nation's most valuable, vulnerable members, as well as our nation's most valuable resources, helping to shape the future of Hazel, Kansas. And whereas children's childhood trauma can have long-term psychological, emotional, and physical effects throughout an individual's lifetime and impact future generations of their family. And whereas children, childhood trauma, including abuse and neglect, is a serious problem affecting every community in the U.S and finding solutions requires input and action from everyone. And whereas protective factors are, are conditions that reduce or eliminate risk and promote the social, emotional, and developmental well-being of children. And whereas effective child abuse prevention activities succeed because of the partnerships created between child welfare professionals, education, health, community, and faith-based organizations, businesses, law enforcement agencies, and families. And whereas children who live in families with access to concrete economic and social support are less likely to experience abuse and neglect. And whereas we acknowledge that in order to solve the public health issue of abuse and neglect, we must work together to change hearts and mindsets through storytelling and sharing, center the needs of families, break down bias and barriers, and inspire action from expected and unexpected partners in prevention. And whereas prevention remains the best defense in our children and families. Therefore, I, Russ Kessler, Mayor of the City of Hayesville, Kansas, on behalf of the Council, staff, and residents, hereby proclaim April 2024 as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Dated today. I'd like to present you with this uh, proclamation. There's a camera right there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just really weird. <laughs> and if you'd like to say a few words. Yes, please. Thank you. Would you like to introduce yourself? 
Um, I'm Lori Chandler. I'm with the Child Advocacy Center of Sedgwick County. And I'm Ashley Velasquez. I'm with the Department for Children and Families tonight, and I'm also the mayor of Keychai. And my name is Rachel Harper. I am the Prevent Child Abuse Kansas Assistant Director at Kansas Children's Service League. And so thank you, council members and Mayor Kessler, for having us here tonight for signing the proclamation declaring child abuse, April Child Abuse Prevention Month. April has been recognized as Child Abuse Prevention Month since 1983. The blue pinwheel, which I have some for everybody here, I'm going to leave this bag. So the blue pinwheel became a symbol for child child abuse prevention in 2008. The pinwheel represents the healthy, happy childhoods that we all desire to see. The theme for Child Abuse Prevention Month this year is building a hopeful future together. We at KCSL strive to build a hopeful future every day in the work we do with families, agencies, and government at all levels. Each day is an opportunity to build the foundation for our future. Prevent Child Abuse Kansas and prevention advocates across the state are poised to provide families with what they need before they are in crisis. But we know we can't do this alone. We all have a role to play as healthy partners in our communities. We all have a resp responsibility to ensure children have positive experiences and help families have the resources they need when they need them. Community support and partnerships can help lighten the burden on families. Policies and programs that put families first build all of us up during uncertain, stressful times. Expanding family-friendly policies like paid sick leave and family leave help reduce stress on our parents and our caregivers. Children who live in families with access to economic and concrete support are less likely to experience abuse and neglect. Positive childhood experiences help to mitigate the effects of adverse childhood experiences and build healthy families and strong communities. So prevention is hard work, but it is also heart work. To celebrate Child Abuse Prevention Month, you can help plant a pinwheel garden, a visual reminder of the world we want for all of our children to grow up happy, healthy, and prepared to succeed. On Digital Advocacy Day is on April 16th, and so you can contact your members of Congress to advocate for increased support and funding for child abuse prevention programs. So please reach out to KCSL for D if, you have, if you have any questions and for, for, for more details. <laughs> Also, follow us on social media, and we will use the hashtag building hopeful futures for all of child abuse prevention posts. So thank you again. Thank you. Anybody else have? I just wanted to say thank you very much for being a partner with KCSL, DCF, and the Child Advocacy Center. Um, you're one of four cities who have decided to adopt this proclamation, each I being the first. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I had to get it out first, you know. But thank you very much uh, for all that you guys do. I know serving as a lo local elected is not easy work, uh, but it is definitely needed. So thank you all. all right, thank you. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you. All right, next we have a proclamation regarding Arbor Day. <clears throat> Whereas in 1872, the Nebraska Board of Agriculture established a special day to be set aside for the planting of trees, and whereas this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, <clears throat> and whereas trees can be a solution to, to uh, combating climate change by reducing the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, <coughs> cutting heating and cooling costs, moderating the temperature, cleaning the air, producing life-giving oxygen, and providing habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable source given us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of businesses, business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now, therefore, I, Russ Kessler, Mayor of the City of Hayesville, do hereby proclaim May 3rd, 2024, as Arbor Day in the City of Hayesville. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And further, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. The eighth day of April, 2024.
All right, next we have presentation and approval of minutes. A minutes of March 11th, 2024. Councilman Crum? I make a motion that we approve the minutes for the March 11th, 2024. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of March 11th, 2024. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Martin? Yes. Benner? Epstein. Parton? Yes. Crum? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, next is <coughs> item one, citizens to be heard. Uh, a, Tony, uh, Tony Wood at 241 North James Street. You come on up here and state your name and uh, your address and uh, you have uh, five minutes, please. Awesome. I suppose I can start with stating my name. It's Tony Wood. I live here in Hayesville. I'm trying to get through this rather quickly. I've timed it a couple times. I think I basically have it down to a couple few minutes, a couple problems, a couple solutions, hopefully. Uh, where do I stack paperwork that I can pass out? It comes right here, okay? Over here. Awesome. This will be what I'll classify as uh, packet one. This will be packet two. I'm not sure how many of there there is available. One, two, pardon me. This will be number three. There should be a number on each page for all of you. And this will be packet four. There should be enough for all of you. But see there, in case I refer to one, two, three, or four. I'm trying to set this deal up real quick just so I can get through that in my level speech. I stumbled through some of this, I just rewrote it in a matter of minutes, but I think we can do it. Okay, hello, my name is Tony Wood. I'm here today to tell you why I feel targeted and harassed. Also to offer solutions. 118.23, my wife and I signed for pictures. That's in packet number four, that's a piece of paperwork. Um, if you guys can, we'll talk about the picture. If you guys can read that while I'm going through and try to tell me what exactly I'm supposed to do with kayaks and pavers, that's the piece of paper to give you. It's insane. Um, it says it's most of my property. I say that the picture, this picture right here is the reason that I called in 118. Uh, this is post board number one. This picture, I believe, was taken above my property, of my property, and that was the phone call that I made after I received this this uh, paperwork and stuff my wife and I signed for. This is the only reason I called Mr. Martinez, the Department of Public Works, on 118 at approximately 12.30 in the afternoon. Um, yeah, I called them. We had a couple conversations. Uh, Mr. Martinez hung up on me. We hung up on each other and stuff. At the end of the conversation, because I was having a dispute of where the picture was taken from above my property, not anything that's in the picture, never did I ever in any of this dispute anything that's in any picture, only that it was taken from above my property, of my property. He explains to me many times during the conversation, I assure you, Mr. Wood, no pictures were taken from above your property. Okay, it's disputable. Um, let me go here. Uh, Okay, so I call them, I call back, I have Mr. Stevens come out to my house, hey, please come out, even though Mr. Martinez said we're going to court, please come out of my property and explain these, the paperwork that I gave you, item number four, and these pictures to me. I did the work they told me to in the video, I videoed the whole conversation, I did everything they asked me to do in that video in a matter of six and a half hours. I went to the Department of Public Works at 805 on 119.23 and told Steven, that they could come look at the property, all the work was done. According to him in the recording, the work should have been rescinded because item number um, number two states that there was nothing filed against me until 9.30 in the morning on 119. 
It states also that they have pictures of a tractor in my yard on 119 because according to statement number three on Stephen, they came by and flew more, took more pictures of my property on 119, even though I expressed my concern. I want to see those pictures, but that's for court. So during the past 15 months, I brought numerous violations. Nobody has ever done anything about any of them. I have plenty of the pictures. That's in reference to board number two. Board number two right here. The Department of Public Works is even on here with their trailers. Everybody's on here. All this, all this you can see from the street. You don't need a drone to fly in the property. All this, I brought all, every single one of these violations you can see by driving down Grand and in my neighborhood where they drive to cite me my violations. <coughs> Nothing's ever been done. So, somewhere in here I've written solutions. Let me find them please, because I don't want to just complain. Right here. So, if you feel the need, you need to see behind my privacy fence, I believe they should make contact with the homeowner and make arrangements to do so. I should have privacy. It's called a privacy fence for a reason. So, pictures should be presented to the homeowners of work done, a letter stating in compliance and case closed. All those things. Thank you. Never should a case be, allow the public works department to continue to harass and photo your yard. Statutes bill passed, amended, the protection from drone, yada, yada. We can all read about that. I think body cameras, maybe, is a possibility also. And I believe the phone records from the Public Works Department should be recorded so there's no mistake on what is said. Thank you all very much. All right, thank you, Mr. Wood. You're welcome. And now what happens? Um, well, we give you five minutes to speak, and um, that's pretty much it, unless uh, council would have a question. Um, no. I don't see any lights lighting up. Um, cool. So it, it, it's more it's for you to uh, to talk to the council. Yes, sir. And if council wants to do anything, uh, that can come later um, at, at their choosing. Absolutely. Just didn't know how it worked first time. I appreciate the time. Thank you, thank you all very much. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other citizens that would like to speak? This is the part in the, our meeting that uh, that doesn't take place. All right, seeing none, we will move on to item two, approval of licenses and bonds. We have none. Item three, introduction of ordinances and resolutions. A, a resolution authorizing the offering for sale of general obligation bonds, series 2024-A of the City of Hayesville, Kansas. We have uh, Brett uh, Schroeder. Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council, uh, Brett Chauvin with Stiefel Nicholson Company, financial advisor to the city. Uh, at your February 12th meeting, you began the uh, special assessment process for water, sanitary sewer, paving, and stormwater drainage improvements uh, for the Copper Tail edition. Uh, the city council accepted uh, the final assessment costs and scheduled a public hearing. <coughs> Property owners were notified via mail. The notice of hearing was published in the newspaper, uh, and the public hearing was officially held on March 11th. Uh, after the public hearing was concluded, the uh, council passed an ordinance to levy the special assessments on those properties. Uh, the property owners were eligible to prepay their assessment in whole or in part by April 3rd. To our knowledge, none of the specials were prepaid, so the full amount of those uh, the full amount of those projects will be financed through general obligation bonds and uh, levied via special assessments to be paid back over a 20-year period. Uh, the resolution for consideration tonight is the bond sale resolution, which authorizes us to move forward with the sale of the general obligation bonds. Uh, we'll work with your staff to build the preliminary, <coughs> preliminary official statement, which is the offering document, and uh, submit such to a list of potential bank, banks and bond underwriters. On May 13th, uh, we will open the bids, we'll check them for accuracy, and uh, sub subjectively award the bonds to the firm that gives the city the lowest true interest cost. You've been through this process many times in the past. 
uh, that evening, that, that date coincides with your next uh, council meeting. Uh, that meeting, I'll present the results of the sale to the council and have you consider the bond ordinance and the bond resolution that finalizes the sale of the bonds and gets them set up for closing. Uh, the bond issue is scheduled to close on May 30th and the proceeds of that bond issue uh, will be sent up to Topeka to the state treasurer's office to pay off the temporary notes that originally financed the project. I'd be happy to stand for any questions you may have thus far. Council, have any questions? I do not see any. Okay. Councilman Bitter? Make a motion that we approve the resolution authorizing the offer the offering for sale of general obligation bond series 2024A for the city of Hazel, Kansas. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution authorizing the offering of sale of general bonds, uh, general obligation bonds as presented. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Martin? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crum? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, brother. I'll, I'll do the next one, too, if you'll let me. I will. <laughs> uh, item B, uh, this, is, this is similar to the previous item. The last item was kind of the last step of these types of projects. This is the first step, okay? Uh, this is similar to the previous item, which is uh, finishing a housing infrastructure pro project. Uh, this is basically step one. Uh, basically, a developer has uh, sent in petitions to uh, the city administration uh, to construct infrastructure improvements. This is for uh, an, an addition called Grand and Plaza. Uh, the estimated uh, petitioned amounts are for paving improvements is $236,000. Uh, sanitary sewer improvements are $167,000. <coughs> water improvements, $107,000. And stormwater drainage improvements, $283,000 for a total of $793,000. And uh, all those costs are proposed to be spread over 16 lots. Uh, all these costs, costs for the improvements are to be assessed 100% to the improvement district or the property owners uh, in the Grand and Plaza addition and 0% to be paid by the city at large. Uh, however, these, are, these will be general obligation bonds if for whatever reason the, the assessments aren't paid, uh, the city uh, must make those payments. Uh, the projects will then, well, will be funded with general obligation temporary notes, which will be authorized at a future meeting. Uh, after the projects are completed, final costs will be assessed to property owners and geo bonds will be sold, just like we're doing with the uh, copper tail edition uh, for any assessments that are not prepaid. Uh, special assessments will be used to make the bond payments over 20 years. Uh, there are four items, items B, C, D, and E, that are for uh, the same uh, project, they're just for the different types of projects. Uh, I guess B would be project authorization for paving improvements, C is the project authorization for sanitary sewer improvements, D is the authorization for water improvements, and E is the authorization for stormwater drainage improvements. Uh, if approved, this begins the construction process. Step two will be <laughs> at your next meeting for authorizing the sale of the temporary <coughs> notes uh, to fund the projects. Be happy to answer any questions. Does Council have any uh, questions? If not, I would entertain a motion for a uh, final D. Council McCrum? I make a motion that we approve a resolution determining the advisability of making of certain internal improvements in the city of Hayesville, Kansas regarding the paving improvements to the Grand and Plaza addition. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution as presented. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Martin? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crum? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, next we have item C, which is a resolution determining the advisability of the makeup, making of certain internal improvements in the city of Hayesville, authorizing and uh, providing for the making of the improvements in accordance with such findings, the sanitary sewer improvements, the Grand and Plaza addition. Councilperson Parton? I make that motion. Second. You said it. <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second to, uh, to approve the resolution <coughs> as presented for sewer improvements. Any discussion? Question, please. 
Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Harden? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crum? Yes. Yes. All right. I'll see the next one, too. D is a resolution determining the advisability of the making of certain internal improvements in the city of Hazel, Kansas, making certain findings with respect thereto, and authorizing and providing for the making of the improvements in accordance with such findings, water improvements for the Grand and Plaza District. Councilman Crum. Uh, I make so the said motion. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution as presented. Any discussion? <coughs> Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Rodden? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crown? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, next we have E, a resolution determining the viability of the making of certain internal improvements in the city of Hazel, Kansas, making certain findings with respect thereto, and authorizing and providing for the making of the improvements in accordance with such findings, stormwater drain improvements for Grand and Plaza Edition. Councilman Walters? I'll make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution as presented. Any discussion? Councilman Benner? Yes. Sir. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Harden? Yes. Benner? Yes. Hart? Yes. Crown? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have item four, notices and communications. A, governing body announcements. Councilman Crump. Uh, at the library, uh, actually this is library week. Library week is April 7th through the 13th. Uh, a lot of people, especially with younger kids, really know there's a lot of things that go on at the library for them, but there's also a lot of uh, things that go on there for all ages. They have the Lego group that they do all the time. Uh, they do special events. They had stuff going on today for the Eclipse. They do stuff for Constitution Day every year. They do something for Pi Day every year. There was a lot of activities that go on, so this is Library Week. Um, library, National Library Workers Day will be tomorrow on the 9th, so I encourage you to go by the library to make sure you thank the workers there and the job that they do. Uh, one other thing they do there is they do genealogy group meetings there. Um, so those kind of activities, are the, the library also hosts one of our voting sites. Um, so they take a lot of, they do a lot of things in our community. Uh, things they do normally, and again, coming up this Thursday at 10.30 a.m., they have what's called Sing and Rhyme Time uh, for, the, for the little ones. And those, that runs at, that begins at 10.30. They do that every Thursday. Leg, next time, the Lego Club meets will be Wednesday, April 17th, and they meet at 4 o'clock. Uh, they meet in the community room. It's held the third Wednesday of every month, so that's an activity that keeps going on. Like I said, the next Thursday after that's another uh, Rhyme Time. Um, Coming up on April 20th from 1 to 4, and they'll be doing paint plant pots, and that's to celebrate Earth Day uh, early at the Hayesville Community Library. You can come by any time between 1 and 4 and discover new ways to paint plant pots with nail polish and materials will be provided for free. Uh, if you have any questions about that, feel free to call the library and let them know. Um, just want to remind people that they're out there and it's a great resource. Uh, it's a great thing for kids to come in. Uh, it's in the historic parks. There's lots of stuff to do out there. It's a great place to go get a book and go out and sit down in the park and read for a little while. But so I remind everybody that it is National Library Week and kind of give them a shout out. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Any other announcements from council? No, I have several. So, uh, so I read off the uh, Tree City USA proclamation. So we did receive a letter from the Arbor Day Foundation uh, congratulating the city of Hayesville as being uh, recognized as the 2023 Tree City USA. So this, uh, this makes 24 years as a tree city. So we'll be putting the, the 24 year sticker on the uh, Tree City USA signs as, uh, as you enter town. Uh, that'll be coming shortly. <coughs> So also on uh, May 3rd, since May 3rd uh, just proclaimed Arbor Day, that's also the uh, 25th anniversary of the Hayesville tornado. So on uh, Friday, May 3rd, 2024, at 5.15 p.m. in the afternoon, uh, at the historic, at the Hayesville Historic Park gazebo, uh, we'll be having a, uh, we'll be commemorating the 25th anniversary of the tornado. So we will have uh, speakers out there. So everybody's invited, the public's invited. So 
uh, please let everybody know uh, to join us for that. And right after that, uh, it'll be followed by uh, tree planting. So the scouts will be planting some trees in support of Arbor Day. Some of the uh, events at the Senior Center, some upcoming events, a WSU Dental Hygiene Presentation. <coughs> Excuse me. That'll be on Wednesday, April 10th at 9 a.m. Meatloaf Dinner, Friday, April 12th at 6 p.m. Fresh Conversations, Eggs Are Good For You Presentation. Uh, that's on a Tuesday, April 16th at 1 p.m. Commodities, Wednesday, April 17th at 1 p.m. Breakfast will be Saturday, April 27th at 9 a.m. Mother's Day Celebration will be Saturday, May 4th at 11 a.m. Taco Dinner, Friday, May 10th at 6 p.m. Some of the uh, recurring programs at the Senior Center. Alzheimer's Care, uh, Caregiver uh, Support Group, Domino's, Donuts, Coffee and Conversation, Chair Yoga, Billards, Bingo, Bunko, Steps, Cards, Drumming, Well Rep, Writing Class, Crafting Club, Blood Pressure Checks, and Enhanced Fitness. So uh, some of the numbers for the Hazel Hustle for uh, March of this year. The number of rides was 252 and new registered riders, two. So uh, total mi miles traveled by the Hustle and the uh, first quarter of 2024 was 3,638.3 miles. Mm -hmm. On miles of one quarter. So, uh, I have several other upcoming events. So, uh, today we just had a ribbon cutting ceremony at the at, uh, Riggs Park with uh, Great South Recreation <coughs> was out there, and uh, Cake TV Channel 10 was out there, and uh, lots of kids, lots of kids were out there playing on the, on the playground equipment. Uh, just a lot of neat stuff out there on this. Uh, this new new equipment, and uh, you can just tell by all the kids. Uh, you know, uh, Pastor Vetter uh, expressed it was a great day out there today, it's sunshine, and just uh, seeing all the kids out there on the playground is just uh, it's great. It's great to be out there. So, uh, April twelfth and thirteenth, uh, which is this weekend, the League of Kansas Municipalities is uh, it's a city leader academy that is in uh, Manhattan, Kansas. I'll be attending that. April 15th and the 22nd at 6.30 p.m. will be a town hall meetings held in the courtroom next door. That'll be for uh, the sales tax. So uh, of course we, uh, we encourage the public to, uh, to come out and uh, hear what, uh, what is happening with the, uh, with the sales tax, what we have been able to accomplish the last 10 years, and uh, what it will do for us going forward and getting the right information out. April 26th is the deadline for the uh, Mayor's Youth Leadership Council applications. So if you know any uh, high schoolers or up and coming high schoolers uh, that would like to participate in, the, uh, in this council, uh, please have them apply for it. The applications are on the website. May 2nd at 7 a.m. is the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast. That'll be at the Hayeswell Activity Center. Tickets are $10 each and can be picked up at City Hall or area Hazel Ministerial Association of Churches throughout the city. Also on May 2nd at noon is the National Day of Prayer that will be observed. The uh, ceremony will be out here in the parking lot by the flagpole in front of the police station. The following day on May 3rd, uh, I made that announcement already, that's the uh, 25th anniversary of the uh, 1999 tornado in the uh, historic district at uh, 5.15 p.m. May 3rd and 4th is the Hayeswell Saddle Club Rodeo at the Rodeo Grounds. That's always fun to go to. Uh, May 7th is, is the special election that is to uh, continue the current 1% sales tax. The uh, polling station is at the library only. You can, uh, do a you can vote early if you go to the uh, county election office or if you uh, register to do it by mail. May 11th at 8.30. We are hosting the Cedric County Association City Meeting at the uh, Senior Center. And that is all. So we have a lot of things going on between uh, now and our next council meeting. All right, next we have item B, memo regarding new business license. <coughs> item C is Cedric <coughs> County Fire Department Station 34 monthly report. Item D is the email from Cost Communications. 
and E, Economic Development Quarterly Report. And Danielle is here tonight. Good evening, Mayor and Council. You have the first quarter economic development report in your packets. On page five, under events, I've listed the home show. Over the four days of the show, we talked to 1,067 people. So that's always a fun number to report because we do talk to a significant number of people about Hayesville during those four days. Um, on page nine, <coughs> the grant amount totals have been added by year for all city grants. I further broke those out by the total amount submitted and also the total amount received. If we're waiting on award notifications, I indicated that with an asterisk so you know that the amount is not definitive and that may increase if, award, if funds are awarded. Finally, before this meeting, I did check with Coppertail for an update on possible leasing availability and he said June 1st. That's what I have for you this evening. Do you have any questions or comments? Any questions for Daniel? Councilman Grum. No question, Daniel. I just want to thank you for the, uh, these reports are great because you really break down stuff good and uh, I like the charts and stuff you give with it to really kind of give us a comparison of stuff's going on and doing a really good job with it. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate that. Any other questions? Seeing none. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, next we have item five, <coughs> business. And then item six, other business. A, consideration of Grand and Plaza addition final plat. We have a uh, Jonathan. Thank you, and good evening, Mayor and Council. On Thursday, March 28th, the Planning Commission reviewed the Grand and Plaza final plat. The Planning Commission is recommending approval, and this is now before you for your consideration. The agent for the applicant is here to answer any questions you may have, and I can also stand for any questions. Does council have any questions? What would the council like to do? Councilman Benner? I make a motion we approve the final plan as presented by the Planning Commission. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve the <laughs> Grand <laughs> Plaza additional final plan as presented. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Barton? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crum? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, thank you. Next, we have item B consideration of design agreement with PEC regarding Grand and Plaza Addition Infrastructure. Councilman Crum? I make a motion that we approve the design agreement with PEC for the Grand and Plaza Addition Infrastructure as presented. We have a motion and a second to approve the design agreement with PEC regarding the Grand and Plaza Addition infrastructure as presented. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Harden? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crum? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, next we have item C, consideration of the revisions to the personnel manual. And that is in your packet. Are there any questions for the personnel manual? Council Person Parton. I make a motion that we approve the revisions to the personnel manual. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the revisions to the personnel manual as presented. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Barton? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crum? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, next we have item D, consideration of the 2024 street report and program. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, before you tonight for the 2024 Street Program, um, it'll be on their TVs as well. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to all or at me and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but a quick overview here. Um, every year we do an evaluation of all of our pavement in town. Um, that's going to include 572 segments of pavement. Um, that's going to be the red stars that you can kind of see on there. Um, the evaluation is going to include any deficiencies and also any drainage issue, issues. Um, the other icon, which is almost impossible to see, are photos. Um, each pavement, so 572 segments, have at least one photo taken. Um, that helps us year to year track any deficiencies. Are they getting worse? How much worse are they getting? Do we need to maybe prioritize something a little better? 
Uh, this is the evaluation form that our street superintendent is going to fill out for every one of those segments. Um, important to note, he's going to select the pavement type. He's also going to assign a PASER rating, 1 to 10, 10 being best. He also will comment on the pavement conditions, drainage conditions, and then the next slide will show us any recommended maintenance or recommended rehab, and then you can upload the photos there. So this is kind of a tool the GIS has really enabled us in the past. It was just done on paper. Um, so this has really helped us uh, digitalize everything. We'll see a few slides here that can show you what we do with the data. Um, this is the PACER rating system. It's a national rating system. Not every city or every uh, department of transportation use a lot, utilizes the same one, but this is the one that a lot of cities use. Um, one to 10, 10 being excellent. Um, important to note, um, one to three are the failing, failing segments. Uh, four to ten are basically fair to excellent. Tell me what kind of training does he have when he goes around and does all this? So like there's an organi organization called LTAP. Uh, they provide a lot of training for our either street operators, heavy equipment, those type of things. Okay. Um, like I was talking about data, this is a heat map uh, of all the data from the evaluation pulled into one single map. So you can see a lot of uh, data at one point. Um, the, red, the red shades are segments of road that were at that three to four, three and less uh, rating. Um, once you start getting in the yellows and greens, those are gonna be the fair and excellent. Um, so generally speaking, if you look at either the map or this is the bar graph with the same data, um, ideally you can tell the benefit of a street sales tax, what it's done, we've been able to do a lot of projects. So then we're gonna get into the projects that we're calling out for this year. Uh, the first up is crack sealing. Uh, basically what that is, is the contractor coming in and cleaning the cracks out. So we're talking about cracks that are uh, half inch or smaller. Um, those, are, those are cracks that are a good candidate for crack sealing. Um, they're gonna clean it out and put the sealant in it. And the reason we do that, um, think of, you know, in Kansas, we're, we're fortunate to have cold winters and hot summers. So when water gets underneath the street into the road base, it's gonna freeze, unfreeze, freeze, unfreeze. So when that happens, that's when potholes start happening, cracking starts happening. So the crack sealing is a great candidate for newly new roads or roads that we've recently done a mill and overlay on. The big thing is we want to protect the investment. Mill and overlay, you'll see some numbers and you may remember those aren't cheap to do. You know, you're talking 50,000 to like this year, I think we're spending almost 500,000. So we want to protect that. So that's why we do crack sealing. Next slide will be the map of our crack sealing project area. Um, so kind of kind of throughout throughout the whole entire city um, next slide will be the estimate so keyword estimate this isn't our bids miss pardon we just did those roads up there and we're already crack sealing them correct so it kind of goes back councilman rarden had this at the uh, ribbon cutting so when you the science behind it when you put a new road in or you mill an overlay if you just walk away and say okay i'll see you in 10 15 20 years every year you're basically just flushing that money down the toilet Crack sealing, at least edge crack sealing, protects the water from getting underneath it. Okay. So this is the estimate, keyword estimate, uh, kind of an internal estimate on the crack sealing. Um, important item to note, the last item, number 33, is the city hall parking lot. That will be paid differently. That will not be paid out of street sales tax. I believe uh, capital improvements is where that will be paid at. Next slide, uh, you guys are pretty familiar with mill and overlay. Uh, overview of what that is, is they will mill two inches off the existing road base, road and then they'll install two inches of fresh new asphalt. Um, the reason we do that, kind of, it gives a seal for the entire road, but also as drivers, it feels like a brand new road. Um, so it's twofold. Is it the perfect solution? No, the perfect solution is to reconstruct road base asphalt from start to finish, but we can't afford that. Next slide will show us the, the map of our mill and overlay project. Um, it's important areas, uh, Councilman Thompson, his court, uh, with the little island we'll be staying. <laughs> uh, next slide will be an estimate again, an estimate. Uh, unit price is $15, that's roughly what we had last year. Um, keep in mind that if bids come in a little bit higher, if it come up to 18 bucks a unit price, that's gonna dramatically affect the total price. Um, the request for proposals will be written to where if it comes in higher than we expect, we can pull a road off, and these are based off priority, one through 10. So we got $553,000 there. Tony, on Van Arsdale, I got a lot of those streets that were on there. The Van Arsdale's been, I don't even know what you call it, chip and it's just the hot tar and the rock they put down. It's got a huge crown on the top too because it's been forever. So is it gonna have new pavement? I mean, when they tear the two down, will the new pavement they put on will be the smooth stuff? You won't have the 
Yeah, so we have a, like PEC provides a city spec standard for the city of Hayesville. So when we do a street project, like this will be called out for technical terms, BM2 mix. So it calls out the size of the aggregate and how smooth it has to be. So that, that's a standard that has to be out there. Just like what you'll see in Copper Tail, Country Lakes, basically the same thing. Okay, thank you. Uh, recommendation the next steps, if you guys have any feedback on any of the, the project areas, um, please give them to me. Um, the crack ceiling project, that's more of a fall project, so I'll be, bringing, I'll be advertising that request for proposals to contractors in June, uh, bringing that back to you for approval in July. Um, the mill and overlay project, uh, if you guys approve the outline agreement or the outline uh, project areas, um, <coughs> tomorrow morning I'll probably be sending out the RFP to contractors and bringing them back to you for approval in the next council meeting. Any questions? I know it went fairly quickly. Councilman Crum? Probably not a question at all on anything you just did, but it is streets. How much <coughs> street do we have left in the city that's not paved? So we have an area behind Sonic over there by Councilperson's Department's area. Um, to be honest, we, we ideally like to do those type of things in-house. Uh, Will Mayor knows that if we do contract out to PUC, they left. Um, we're paying 10% on top of that just to have it designed. Um, I'm a little reluctant out there because I don't want to affect drainage. I don't want to put a, a ribbon asphalt out there and then Councilperson Parton gets calls about now my yard floods. So we're still kind of analyzing that to, to make a decision on what's best. Okay, now across from the turnpike over there is that's in our area too, is it not? Yeah, so, yeah Emmett Court is still unpaved. It's gravel. Um, oh, is that the whole list? Yeah. Emmett Court's over by the old BFW. Okay. This is what he's talking about. And then Wagner here on the west end over kind of north of Public Works. There's another area. It's a dead end there. Um, I guess really, you know, those are things we want to take care of. Well, I'm curious when, when he does the road, does he even look at those streets to see if there's yeah, so every road, even like city parking lots, Dorner Park Road, Plagans parking lot, he does an evaluation on every every segment we we go. Rick's parking lot. Okay, and and I know you said we'd love to have everything paved. Are we trying to look at trying to do that, even by little bits and pieces, impossible? Well, the part by council person, uh, part of us just like a couple cul-de-sacs right right that connecting street yeah. Connect, right yeah that connecting street um that could be done a project i think it's better to do everything at one time possibly as far as for money uh for budgeting um it is something we want to do uh soon um, and it's part of the decision making process you know we want to do an improvement project that's going to touch as many people as possible so if you know a road is rated a three but it's a cul-de-sac and only 10 homes drive on it and there's another one that's a rated three but it's not a thoroughfare but it gets traveled quite re quite quite often you know we're going to elevate or prioritize that one over um, so, so i was just wondering like when we're doing the improvements over there on what we just approved <coughs> to get the bond stuff on if we've got some streets over there that aren't paid you know could we it would be a different project but could we at least like get a bid to see how much it would be to, because they're already there you know, I didn't know if that would be cheaper to do that. That's the main reason I'm asking, because I know we're doing some work in an area that's near where we've got some. Yeah, and we could easily, and we've done this before, uh, last year we looked at paving uh, Rick's Park, the, the road that goes through it. So when our mill and overlay contractor was here, I kind of stole and said, hey, can you, here's what we want to do possibly out here, can you give me an estimate on it? And they provide an estimate, like, whoa. <laughs> but, you know, we can do that to, you know, the gravel roads, and at least we have a dollar amount of what, you know, the mayor and others need to kind of, a place setter, you know, Okay, it just kind of curious because it would be nice if we just had everything paid and wouldn't have to worry about it. I would agree because we would have to grade them right. and all that good stuff. That's all I had, thanks. Well, and I, I see your point of if it feeds more people, but you can't keep pushing them down the road either. Yeah. Eventually, you're going to have to just bite the bullet and do it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we'll see if we can't get some type of estimate uh, for those roads. Any other questions on the uh, 2024 street board and program? Do we need to make a motion or anything on it? Yes. That's my girl. I have a motion that we approve the 2024 street report program as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the 2024 street report and program as presented. Any discussion? Question, please. 
Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Barton? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crown? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, next we have item E, consideration of manhole rehab. Uh, in an effort to refurbish the city's sanitary sewer system, the wastewater department identifies manholes that need attention. Uh, when we talk about att attention, that means infiltrated with water or uh, soil. Um, that can obviously cause issues in our sanitary sewer system. Um, this year, uh, we detailed the areas in town in a map that's included in your packet. Um, we're looking at a pro rehabbing approximately 194 vertical feet. Um, we are requesting authorization to contract with CBET Consulting LLC in the amount of $25,220. This is a budgeted item and will be paid out of wastewater funds. And we have worked with CBET in the past before with no issues. Council Person Barton. I make a motion we accept the bid from CBET Consulting for $25,220. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the manhole rehab as presented. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walter? Yes. Martin? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crum? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, next we have item F, consideration of water materials purchase. So we've also obtained quotes to purchase water, service, <coughs> brass material, and meter setters. Uh, these items are going to be used to replenish our current inventory. Um, these items are used to fix water leaks and install new water services to homes and businesses. Um, we are requesting authorization to purchase the material from Wichita Wind Water in the amount of $18,118.50, and this will be paid out of the water materials funds. Councilman Crum? So because this is going to be like stuff that we keep as inventory, do you guys put this in your budget? Yes. Do you know how much you budgeted this year by chance? We can look, but it's a large amount. It's usually anywhere between sixty to 80000 okay. in that range, but yeah. Okay. So you budgeted quite a bit more than what this is? Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the consideration for the water water materials purchase as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the water materials purchase as presented. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walter? Yes. Barton? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crum? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, next we have item G, consideration of antique light pole order. So we've also obtained a quote from American Streetscape, Streetscape Lighting to purchase 10 pole assemblies for a repair supply. Um, these poles at times seem to be targets for vehicles driving down Grand and Main. Um, this vendor is the manufacturer and is the sole provider of this type of unit that we utilize. Um, in comparison, in 2022, as before you, ordering 10 assemblies through a third party vendor locally. And uh, our quote at that time that we approved was 26,000. Uh, so by being able to buy able to buying directly from the manufacturer, we're able to save about five thousand um, dollars. So we're requesting authorization to purchase ten antique light pole assemblies from American Streetscape Lighting for twenty one thousand four hundred ninety dollars, and this will be paid out of capital improvements funds. Councilman Walters, Tony, you said uh, these light poles seem to be targets. Like you're saying, we're having accidents of people running into them. Occasionally, yeah, I would say probably two to three a year, roughly. We had one two weeks ago, approximately. And are they assess the damage? Yeah, if the, if the driver's caught, we file it with their insurance, and it's about $2,200 minus labor uh, that we invoice them for, basically. So we're able to recover most of this cost? Most usually, yes. No, we, 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 if we catch the driver and have their insurance, we recoup all the costs, including the labor to reinstall it. Okay. I make a motion that we accept uh, antique lights as presented Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the antique light pole order as presented. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Barton? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crown? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Thank you. All right, next we have item seven, <coughs> department reports. A, administrative services. Georgie? I don't have anything. Item B, city clerk. Angie? I don't have anything. Item C, police chief. I'll get up and talk to him, somebody else. All right. <laughs> okay. I uh, just wanted to introduce our visiting officer tonight, Officer Scott Kitzenberger. Uh, he's currently our school resource officer out at the uh, Hayesville High School and Tri City Day School. So say hi to him and go by out there. Um, also, our annual uh, DEA drug take back. Actually, I guess we do it twice a year. Um, 
but our DEA drug take back will be on April 27th from 10 o'clock until 2 o'clock out here in the parking lot of the PD. Uh, we'll do a drive through again as we've done the last couple times. Uh, seems to work out pretty good, so that's our plan for now, uh, weather permitting, of course. Um, second item there is our uh, car seat check that we do, um, our annual car seat check sponsored by the uh, Hayesville Chamber and the city. Uh, we'll be doing that on the 4th of May from 9 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon. And again, that'll be right out here in the front parking lot of the city hall. So if you have those car seats that uh, need to be checked on and, and you're not sure how to install it or not sure if it's installed correctly, definitely <coughs> bring it by and our technicians will look at it and make sure you've got it all installed and get you on your way. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right, thank you. Next we have item D, Public Works. Tony. So we'll have a couple screenshots on the TV, but I just wanted to take a quick moment to advertise our citizen problem reporter that's on the city's website. Um, this application was developed internally by our GIS administrator, Cody Irwin. Um, the first slide, Chris, if we can go back one, it has a red circle around the area on the city's homepage problem report. Uh, residents are able to click on that and it'll take them to this next page. Uh, first off, it's gonna give them a quick overview. We don't want any emergencies. This, this website isn't monitored 24 seven. So we tell them, you know, water, wastewater, if your basement's flooding with sewer, don't put it on here. Here's some numbers to call. Um, the map at the bottom, they're, all, oh, they're able to see any open or resolved uh, reports. Um, so we're able to manipulate the map. Uh, we try to update those if we're in the progress of doing something. Um, once they hit submit report, they have several categories on the right, whether it be an animal control issue, code enforcement, zoning, utility, street issue. They're able to report them in there. Um, Next slide. Uh, obviously, the most information we get, the better. Sometimes we do get very vague ones where we really don't know what it is or where it is. Um, if they leave contact information, we're able to contact them. Um, but they can also be anonymous, and they can also upload a photo. Um, this is the manager side of it. So this is the rear facing. This is what we see. Um, we're able to track all the open ones. Um, and hopefully, some of you have seen if uh, something's going to take some time to take care of, we also update it with the steps that we're taking. Um, so that's that, I think it's good to have out there. And also um, our recycling center for the summer and spring is starting again on the fourth Saturday of the month from April to August. Uh, that means this month it'll be on April 27th from 10 a.m. to noon at Public Works. So that's all I have. Uh, thank you, Doug. Next we have Rob, Recreation. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, pool sales started today. Uh, for your pool passes, swim lessons, and rent of your pool parties. Uh, part of the 060 will be in Riggs Park on April 20th from 3 to 9 p.m. And the splash pad is scheduled to be open on May 1st. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next we have item eight, appointments. We have none. Item nine, executive session. Item 10, review of expenditures. A summary of March expenditures. Councilperson Martin. Make a motion we receive and file the March expenditures. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file the March expenditures. Councilman Walters. Yeah, I had a question, uh, an unusual, seemed like an occurrence, uh, multiple charges uh, for SAMs that had late fees and interest charges. I wonder if somebody could talk to that. The, um a check was not received by Sam's, it was lost in the mail. So that was what that one was. Um, that that, that caused multiple interest charges and multiple late fees? It wasn't a lot. It was a few cents here and there, like a whole page of it. Yeah, there was, sorry, I thought there was, there was one that was late and then the next month the check was lost, so that's why. But the reason there are a bunch on there is because it's broken out between the funds that made yeah, the purchases. So if, uh, a third of the bill was for public works and it was broken out between water, wastewater, street, and each one of those funds would get a little bit of the fee. So everybody is parsed out there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's not like 50 of them. It's just. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> Any other discussion? <coughs> Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Martin? Yes. Benner? Yes. Parton? Yes. Crum? Yes. Thompson? Yes. All right, next we have item 11, consent agenda. We have, we have items A through D. Councilman Benner. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Right. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda, items A through D. Any discussion? 
Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walters? Yes. Harden? Yes. Benner? Yes. Harden? Yes. Tom? Yes. Tom? Yes. All right, next we have item 12, council items. A, council concerns. Councilman Crum. Uh, not a concern. I'd say that I hope everybody got the flyer or started getting the flyer today. I know we got ours about the sales tax question coming up and also about the meetings. And I did want to make the citizens re know and also council that I will not be at the meeting on the 15th because I have a swim meet in Salina that night. But I will be there on the 22nd. Okay, thank you. Councilman Rarden. Well, I have a question, not a concern, but I have a question. Here a while back, we were, you guys were going to do a, the staff was going to do a study about where we were at with uh, raises and that sort of stuff. And that's been several months ago, and we've not heard anything, so I'm just kind of curious. Um, well, let's speak to that. Yeah, so that was going to be basically in their procedure, basically a four to five month process. They did, and I think we approved it in November, and they did start it in December. I remember that for sure. So Georgie and I had a video conference meeting with them a week and a half ago, and they gave us an update on where they're at. They've already collected all the data from surrounding cities and counties that they're going to use for the comp uh, to compare our rates and our positions. So then they're working on setting up, basically building. They, they're going to consider basically using the pay chart like we have, and then they're also going to consider other methods like using pay bands and they're going to present that to us and we're going to look at it so they're in process of building building basically that pay chart or those pay bands any other council concerns if not we'll move on to item b council action request updates Update for 7106 South Broadway. Uh, the property owner was sentenced to jail for 12 months. Um, that sentence was uh, sub sub suspended if he complies with probation. Um, if he violates his probation, uh, probation, probation can be revoked and then he could go to jail. All right, that takes us to item 13, adjournment. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn tonight's meeting. Any discussion? Question, please. Brewster? Yes. Walter? Yes. Pardon? Yes. Benner? Yes. Pardon? Yes. Crow? Yes. Oh. Yes.